So assuming that you have finished your character and you've got all the limbs and all the you know, legs and arms rounded off and you kind of like where, what, you're, what you're seeing, what I've handed you is a photocopy. This is actually from a book. And the book I have here is an awesome book. It's called The Animator's Survival Kit. Um, and it's by Richard Williams. Okay, and this guy was the director of animation for the movie uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Okay, back in the day. How many of you have ever seen that movie? You no, know, I mean, it, it's awesome. Yeah, he, Jessica Rabbit, you remember Jess, Jessica Rabbit? She made quite a stir because she was scantily dressed cartoon character. And there was the first movie that ever really blended um, live action actors and cartoon characters in, in the way that it did. And that wasn't the first ever. Like Alvin and the Chipmunks type of thing? Yes, but, you know, a lot, you know, longer than that movie that you're talking about came out. Um, and, uh, and inside it, he's got all these great drawings and references for like how a person walks, how their body moves. And so what I've done is I just, I just took one of them and I'm gonna sh you know, have a copy of this up so you can kind of see. What we're talking about here is we're building, we're, we wanna build a run cycle. And a run cycle, uh, the word cycle is used very much, uh, very importantly because in Flash, um, when you do an animation, it actually cycles the animation. It, it loops it is, what, is um, the common term. And that means that it, when it hits the end of an animation, it goes back to the beginning and just keeps playing it over and over and over again until you tell it to stop. Now, we'll get more into some of the uses of looping, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to use this, this, uh, these uh, keyframes that from the book, Animator's uh, Survival Kit, um, to build a really nice run cycle, very smooth run cycle. So. With our, with our character here, uh, what we've got, and then we'll just take a look at these keyframes first. Um, you can see that we're going to start with the front leg forward, okay? And, and my guy's going the opposite way. That doesn't matter. You can translate the keyframes either direction, okay? In fact, you might even be able to, uh, can I flip this? Yeah, flip horizontal. There we go. Boop. Just like that, okay? just in case you're confused. But now I have to go left to right, so. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but so the right leg, or the, the leg that's closest to us, is going to be straight out forward, and then the, the left leg, or the leg furthest away from us, is going to be um, kind of kicking back. And then as he goes through the run cycle, you're gonna see how the legs change, boom, 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 until the front leg, or the right leg, ends up kicking back in exactly the same position as the left leg was at the beginning of the cycle, and now the left leg is extended. So now, if I were to stop right here and have the animation jump back, all of a sudden the legs would flip-flop. It wouldn't look very good. In fact, we'll do that just for fun once I've done the first seven keyframes. So this is actually representing only half of the actual run cycle, because what we need to then do in order to finish off the entire cycle, if we've got the right leg goes kick, kicks back, then the right leg needs to continue and come forward just exactly the same as the left leg does in order to get to its original position. So we'll talk exact about how I go about doing that since we only have half of what we need here um, in just a second. But let's just start with the first seven. So my first keyframe is that straight out and leg kicked back Thing. So we're just going to go here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to start with uh, one keyframe every two frames. So we're going to build one keyframe every two frames. And the cool thing about the inverse kinematics layer is that later on, if we want to condense that and make it shorter, or if we want to expand it and make it longer, we can definitely do that. Okay, it's it's really simple to do. Um, so. I'm going to need uh, 17 keyframe, or wait, 7 keyframes, 14 frames. We'll go 15 uh, for now. So I'm just going to go and insert frame, okay? And that just gives me that time. That just gives me that time for the first 7 frames. Now the inverse kinematics, or the armature layer, works a lot like your motion tween. So in order to create a new keyframe, you don't actually go in there and right click and say insert keyframe. You'll, say that there is, you'll see that there is no insert keyframe in our little list here, okay? All you have to do is move the guy and it creates a keyframe. So if I just grab his hand and I just move it like that, all of a sudden you'll see, look, there's a new keyframe, okay? So this is good and bad, 
Because what this means is you have to be very careful with, you have to be very mindful that you know where you are in time. <laughs> That's a strange statement to say if taken out of context, but I think you understand what I mean. In other words, you have to be very mindful of where this playhead is. Because if you want to modify keyframe number one, but you're not paying attention and you're over here on frame number eight, and then you start moving them around, you've made a new keyframe. You haven't actually changed frame number one. And you can sit there and do a ton of work and then look up and realize, I wasn't on the right frame. And you've either A, created a new keyframe, which is now useless, or B, you've screwed up another keyframe that you needed to keep the same. So one of the things that I have to stress the importance of here is always being mindful of when you are in your animation. Not, not where you are, but when you are in your animation. So always double check this up here. So I'm just going to um, click on this keyframe and I'm just going to remove that pose. So cut pose. See you later. Okay, now let's go back to frame one and let's modify frame one here to look uh, exactly like what we want from our um, example. So just go back to preview. I've got the image open here. And uh, okay, so the front leg is stretched out forward and the heel is striking the ground. Back leg is kicked uh, back. So now I'm going to, uh, and this is just, this is what's so cool about the way that this works in the inverse kinematics is you can just really just go to town and positioning your guy. Now I already have the arms kind of already set up because I did this second period, okay? Um, so I'm cheating a little bit. Um, and, and realize that different postures mean different things. So one of the things we were talking about second period is, right now with his posture the way he is right here, he's not jogging. He's running, right? Because he's kicking his legs out, his arms are really swinging out far. This is not a jog, this is a run. And this is actually really important to understand that because if, you, if you're not careful, the body posture and the way the body is moving, that can really affect what happens. So basically, this needs to be a high-speed deal. If I go back in later on, as I'll show you, and slow this down, it's going to look silly because the body posture is obviously calling for him to be running. But if I slow the animation down too slow, and now he's going about the speed of a jogger, but with this body posture, it looks silly. So these are important things to kind of keep track of, but that, you know, you'll, you'll get there, you'll understand that. So there's keyframe number one. So we'll just go forward a little bit, and keyframe number two is him, is just going to be the knees up a little bit, slightly bent, and then this leg's coming forward. So kind of like this, foot flat on the floor, whoops, and then this is kind of coming forward, and then now... Um, this arm is coming back and that arm's now more vertical. So like this, maybe. And this arm's coming back like that. Does that look pretty good? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe this arm, this forearm needs to be back just a little bit more like that. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to go on to number three. So I need to move forward two frames. You can't forget to move forward when you're ready to create a new keyframe. If I don't do that, I'll just be messing up my second one. And now this leg has come down here, okay, and still bent, and it's still in the same place. Um, and uh, the leg is now straight. So these, the thighs are almost in the identical position. So bring this down here like that, like that, like that. Bring this forward, and if anything, the back thigh was a little bit forward here. Now I'm looking at this, and I'm, I, I changed the guy. It, I, we, we definitely have a problem here with the butt, okay, that I would want to now stop right now in the animation, and I would go back and I would move my, um, my rotate points and stuff for that back leg. I'm not going to worry about it right now, but that's definitely a problem, yes? Yes, okay, that's definitely a problem. That looks awful. Um, but we won't worry about it right now. Um, <clears throat> so now this arm's coming down here like so. This arm's back here like this. And let's see how that looks. 
Not too shabby, that looks pretty good. So let's go on to four. So now four, the front leg is now slightly back, toe point, or the foot is pointed a little bit, and the front leg is now coming forward, and the arms are basically right at their sides, but the back arm is a little bit behind the body, and the front arm is definitely down alongside the body. So here, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do now is this leg is coming back, yes, like that, and the toe is, point, whoop, there's the hand got in the way there, that's okay. Now the toe is, nope, oh, there, that foot got in the way too. That's gonna happen a lot. That's why the handlers are both good and bad, but they do help. Um, so now that arm's gonna come forward just like this. Sometimes you gotta get things lined up and then put them back. Like that. And then this arm is slightly behind, but the hand is pretty much all the way behind the body. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Well, see, in this pose, the forearm here is a little higher than the in that thigh. So let's go back here and click this and bring the forearm like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, now, and the leg is still slightly bent. Now, I didn't put a hinge on the toes. Now, if I was really wanting to do this really good, I would have divided my foot into two parts, a back half and then the toe half from the ball, you know, the ball of the foot right there, right in front of the instep uh, to the toes. I'm not going to do that here, but obviously it's going to look like he's running with like stiff feet. That's kind of weird. Whereas you can see here in the keyframes, he's got a bent foot. Okay. That's definitely better. If you wanted to do that, all it means is just erasing part of the foot, putting in another, um, uh, bone and you're set to go. It's up to you. Um, if you wanted to go that far, I think that would be probably pretty cool. So now <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, so where are we here? We're here. So we got to do number five. So now the leg's straight out. The inside leg is uh, almost straight out and the foot's ready at like the apex here. And then these arms are back. So this leg goes back like this, straight out. Whoops, I broke his knee. Oh, thank you. I just made a big mistake. Yep. So I'm going to undo, 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 undo. There we go. No. There we go. So now we're back to normal. Thank you. I didn't move forward. Haha. Uh -huh. See, even I do it. So there we go. <clears throat> move that forward. Tippy toes again. Bring this. Whoops. That forward a little bit. So again, it's kind of at the apex. Bring that foot forward just a tiny bit. And then uh, this arm's gonna come back more here. And then this arm's coming forward more here like that, okay? So that's starting to look good. Let's just take a look. So, do-do, do-do. I probably should move this forearm down just a little bit. Again, a lot of it just depends on how much you wanna emphasize the motion. Um, now we go to number six. Now the foot is kicking back and this foot, the thigh is in the same place, but now the, sh the shin, the, f the bottom leg is coming forward, getting ready to get, you know, to step down. And now for the first time we can see the fist come out from behind the body. And then this arm is now separated from the body for the first time too. See that? So <clears throat> here we go. Bring this forward, bring that backwards like that. Now this, like, maybe like that. Then this leg is kicking back, right? And now this foot is coming forward like that, getting ready to strike the ground. Did I not move forward? I didn't move forward. Stink. There we go. Does that, is that back to where we are? Yes, that's back to where we are. Okay, see, this is what happens when I talk and I do this stuff. Okay, so let's try that again. So now we're going to bring that out. Okay, and then we're going to bring this. Whoops, there's the handler getting in the way. Then we're going to bring that kick backwards, bring that forwards, okay, and bring that up even a little bit more. Okay, so now we're at that fully extended. Okay, let's take a look, see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Now we go to number seven. So we're going to move forward just a little bit more. One, 
One, two, three, four, five. Crap. I skipped one. All right, so now we got to figure out which one I skipped. One is fine. Two is fine. Three is fine. No, three is not. Three is four. Ah, okay. So now I skipped. I, what I did is I modified number three and made it into four. So that's okay. Watch what I can do. Okay, this is kind of cool. I'm going to just click and drag, and now I can highlight those three keyframes. We're just going to move them over to, okay? Give me some space here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this keyframe here. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say, uh, copy pose. Now I'm going to move forward to right click and I'm going to say paste pose. Now I click and drag, bring these back one because I brought them one forward. Now I've got the same pose twice. I've got number three twice. And the reason why I did that is because that'll give me a, a little bit of an easier time of, of redoing it if I just have to do number two all over again. So anyway, okay, so three is they're together and the arms are really close. Okay, so this arm, whoops. Don't you just love it when the teacher messes up too? Hopefully it makes you feel like, wait a second, I can do this. Because you can. How's that look for three? Now nah, this arm's a little too far forward, like that. Okay, so and apparently I lost my poses on six and seven. I don't know why Flash did that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So five. So four. Five and six are now all the same. How did that happen? Well, sometimes Flash just doesn't do what you want it to do. Let's take a look. So we're on four. Yep. So I got to do five and six all over again. Isn't that lovely? Well, that's okay. That happens. So now I'm just going to do five, leg extended out, leg up. This one comes forward a little bit more. That one comes back a little bit more. So the leg's going to come out like this. This leg's going to come forward some more. That arm comes there. That arm comes back there. Okay. Now we're on six. Six is leg kicking out, leg front more. Not quite sure why I did that, but that's okay. The beauty of what Flash does do, though, for you is that it does make it easy to correct things when things go wrong like this. Okay. I'd, I'm not sure why it did that, but at least now I have that. So now we're going to number seven. So now we're in number seven, which is leg fully kicked back, arm fully back, arm full forward, and then this leg is now straight. So now this leg is going to come down with the heel here. That arm's going to be there. This leg's going to be, whoops, that leg's going to be kicked forward fully. Okay, like that. And this arm's going to be up a little bit. Maybe bring that back a little bit. Okay, so now we've got our seven. So now let's just do this. It's going to take, we're going to take this frame, and now I'm going to just remove it so that there's literally one frame before it goes back to one. Now let's watch, let's watch what happens right now, because right now we've only got a half a cycle. So it's going to look really strange. All right, I'm going to save it really quickly so if flash crashes, which it does do every once in a while, I don't lose all of, all of what I've just shown you because that would just ruin this. So now I'm going to preview my movie by going test movie. Don't just go to play or hit the play button down here. It won't always play in real time. You want to actually test the movie, which is also command enter. See that? So just command enter. It exports it into a movie. Yeah, see it kind of looks weird. Yeah, the butt is a little disturbing, isn't it? Okay. That's okay. We'll, 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 we'll change that. If we've got time, I'll show you we can change that. So now, so here's what I need to do. Here's what I need to do. 
I need to, I'm going to insert frame here, just give myself some more time in the animation. Now, if I look, what I really need to do is I need to just go backwards, essentially, starting with number two, but flip-flop. Right leg for left leg, left leg for right leg. Does that make sense? Right leg for left, okay, so that, so that essentially I'm just bringing this right leg here, I've got to bring it back so that it's now extended forward like the left leg is now. Okay, so we're just going to go forward another two frames and we're just going to rebuild the cycle, but now we're just going to flip-flop sides. So if I look at number two, I've got, now it's going to be the right leg is going to be down, left leg is bent. Okay, left leg bent like that, right leg coming down, arm comes down, arm comes down. Okay, there we go. Go forward another two frames. Let's take a look. Now they're almost overlapping. Arms are down a little bit more. This arm's almost like right there. Now I've got, whoops. Leg's still flat. This leg is still here like that. Go forward another two. Now I'm going to bring the, the front leg forward and the back leg is back, but just not quite the same. So now this leg is forward, this leg is, whoops, come here, you. Let's move that arm there, this arm here, that there like this, and still bent a little bit, right? Go forward another two. Now I've got to bring let's just make sure I've got a so there they are there. This one should probably be it should probably be a little bit further forward, shouldn't it? Like that. And then the back leg is extended and this one's forward. Okay, so then we go back here. So it just kinda you just kinda have to Kind of keep track of everything. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the encouragement. There we go. And now we're only one away. We're only one away. So now we have to kick this back leg there and bring the other one forward. So go forward two. Bring the other leg forward. Bring this here like that. This one back a little bit more like so. And then kick, whoops, kick the foot back. Not quite the full length. So now what I can do is just take these and remove them, remove frames. Now let's build our cycle. So command enter. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? Yeah, the butt is a little disturbing. Let's take care of that, okay? See, and here's the, this is the cool thing about symbols. Yeah, his head's not moving, so you could go in and animate his head, guys. That's, you know, that's definitely something. So, if I wanted to, I'm going to go in, double click, and I can just change the angles here. Okay, of his of of the right thigh, I guess the back thigh, and I'm going to actually add a point here. To kind of bring this and make it a little different, add another one here, add another point there, and bring that one in a little bit. Okay? So I, I, you know, we noticed that there was, there, was, there was obviously a problem with the way that looked. So I can go back in and I can rearrange the way it looks. I can also go in here into the torso. Okay. And readjust that a little bit too.
Now look how, now, now let's see how it looks. Oh, it looks a lot better, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it does. You know what, and you know what it is, really? It's because there is a slight change because the last keyframe is not the same as the first. Oh, and look, it, 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 it increases speed here. So let's do this. We're going to, I'm not sure how that happened. Did, not sure where that keyframe came from because I didn't create that one. Let's, let's cut that pose out. I think that's causing some problems. Okay. But yeah, this last keyframe isn't the same. So here's what we're going to do is I'm going to insert one more frame here. And then I'm going to take my first keyframe. And I'm going to copy the pose. Go back to 25 and paste the pose. So now my first keyframe and my last keyframe are the same. Now what that's going to do is it's going to cause a momentary hesitation because he's going to be at the same pose twice, but it's probably going to reduce the jerkiness. So let's take a look at that, see what that looks like. See, there is a momentary hesitation, but now it looks a lot smoother, doesn't it? See that? Because now the first frame is the same as the second. Now, <clears throat> let me just go one further. Watch this. So now, we, I'm just for fun. I've built this guy, right? I'm going to do a whole other demo on this, but watch this. I'm just going to select all, right click, convert to symbol, call it runner, all. Okay? Now, I've got this symbol. So if I bring him over here, and let's insert frame here. 60 frames, create motion tween, go to 60, slide them across the frame like this. Now when you do this, you don't see anything happening. But when you build the animation, it's a nested tween. Ah, yeah, there's the moment. I see the light bulbs. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah? All right, so this is why we're doing this, and that's why I taught you the nested tweens beforehand, was so that you could understand this, and that's why I had you guys, that's why you're going to build him so he's running in place. You do not want to move him at all, because when you do that, actually, the rotation points of the limbs will start to change, and your guy will literally start to explode. His, like, elbow will start blowing off, and then, like, the forearm will start rotating around a random point, and then it will just like dis disconnect from the rest of his body. It's really bad, okay? So here, and, and notice what we're doing here, folks, is look at this. The animation on top is only 60, fra is 60 frames long. The animation inside the symbol is only 25 frames long. Now, if I want to make him run slower, all I have to do is grab, see how I get the double arrows there? And just stretch this out. <coughs> Notice that it tries to space the keyframes evenly. Now it can't. Now the, the animation was 25 frames long. If I made it 50 frames long, it would be able to space them out evenly, but it can't because it's only 45. However, if I build this again as soon as Flash has finished thinking there, now you'll see that he's running a little bit slower. He's still moving side to side the same speed, but now it's like slow-mo, huh? You see? So <clears throat> having the different animations inside this, or the one animation inside the symbol, and then the motion tween on top of the symbol allows you to fine tune the look and feel of what you're doing. Now it feels like chariots of fire and slow-mo running. You know, I, I want the music from that movie right now, you know? I don't need it from you, though. <laughs> Does this make sense? All right, cool.